So do you like fishing? Maybe you don't want to be paddling your bait out every time like this. If that is the case, maybe you'll be considering one of these. This is the Swell Pro Splash Drone 3, and this is the Gannett Pro. Let's put them through their paces and see what we think. What do you reckon, boys? Yay! So I hope this review saved you some time uh, with some good information. The Splash Drone 3 and the Gannett Pro are both similar in recommended retail price, um, and both drones are of really high quality. We've really enjoyed mucking around with them over the last week, and so let's explore some of the pros and cons. So the cases are almost identical. They're really well designed and easy to transport. I think the Gannett's case could benefit with some additional room for extra batteries. So straight away we can see that the splash drone holds its bait release a lot higher off the ground than the Gannett. Uh, this will minimise chances of sand getting into the drop mechanism. So waterproof drones have unique challenges, as well as keeping water out, they need the internal sensors to be able to sense changes in air pressures. So without this, um, altitude couldn't be identified and options such as return to home would pretty much be a non-event. So the splash drone achieves this by using a waterproof membrane. So this membrane also allows heat from inside to dissipate and if the membrane is damaged it's actually quite easy to replace. The GPS receiver as you can see sits directly underneath the membrane. The splash drone battery allows for around 19 minutes of flight time. Uh, the battery is a little fiddly to replace and opening the battery compartment does expose the um, internal components to whatever environment you're in. So water getting into this area is actually the most common reason that splash drones are needed to be repaired and it's majority of the time due to uh, the operator not closing the seal correctly. So the Gannon on the other hand keeps all of its electronics fully sealed and it actually allows barometric pressures to be sensed by using this um, internal flexible bladder. If water does get in it's contained to the internal bladder and as you can see it exits quite easily also. So the Gannett battery has got around 22 minutes flight time. So the battery compartment is also completely sealed to the internal components and it actually looks quite well designed. So the Gannett battery is really easy to replace. So the props of the Gannett are spin on. Uh, they're really easy to put on. It could benefit from an indicator to let you know which prop goes onto which motor. So the Swell Pro used to have spin-on props. They found that when it hit the water, it had the tendency for those props to actually undo, um, rendering the drone pretty much useless sitting in the water without props. So they now have this quarter turn locking system. It's also really easy to um, put on and it does have indicators to show you which props go onto which motors. So if you're looking for a controller which doesn't require you to use your phone, the Swell Pro controller is probably the one that you're after. So it's not waterproof, but it is well set out and it feels really comfortable to use. And the screen, it's really easy to see, even in bright sunlight. I am wondering though, over time, if sand um, getting into the control stick could be an issue. So the Gannett controller is self-proclaimed sandproof. Um, it looks really well designed and also it's comfortable to hold and use. So you will require a phone with the Gannett, but it is actually really easy to link. So you will, so you will require a phone with the Gannett, but it's actually really easy to link. And I'm sure that as Gannett increases with their technology, uh, the quality of the camera and the footage will increase with it. So out of the two drones, hooking the bait on is easiest with the Swell Pro. It's literally open, hook on, close, and then when at your dropping point, open again.
We've found the return to home with a splash drain really easy to use. It's just flicking the switch and waiting for it to land. And it actually is remarkably accurate with its landing. I just can't seem to believe in the but don't think you've got to limit yourself to the beach. Why would you ever limit yourself? Start her up, bro. Let's go. So hooking the bait on with a gannet is actually quite easy to do, although it does require you to adjust the pressure each time, and that's relevant to the weight of the bait as it changes. Gannet suggests it can lift twice that of the splash drone, so we thought we'd test it here with two kilograms. As you can see here, it handles it quite well. So the return to home option on the gannet is also pretty easy to use with just a flick of the switch. The gannet does seem to bounce awkwardly on self-landing. I'm wondering if that's because of the pressure release is actually underneath and you've got ground effect and props acting on that. And due to the low clearance, sand getting into the mechanism is a consideration. Unlike DJI drones, uh, neither of these two will automatically return home if the battery becomes flat. So the Swell Pro has a visual key on the screen here, which you can see, and the Gannet has the advantage of an audible alarm. So for those late evening fishing trips, both have lights on them. The Splash Drone only has consistent lights on one side, which makes it a little bit challenging to see in different configurations, where the Gannet has four consistent lights all around the drone. Worst case scenario, the Golden Beach Fish and Chip Shop has everything you hot may desire. Cheers. <laughs> Until the next review, I hope you get outside and happy adventures.